Hi there, this is Amy C. Oliver, Visitor and Science Center Manager at the Fred Lawrence Whipple Observatory. Thanks for joining me for Storytime. Today, we're reading Lucy's Planet Hunt, or How to See Things in a Different Light, a NASA publication written by Diane K. Fisher and illustrated by Alexander Novotny. I'm Lucy Nell, astronomer. I love the sky at night. I long to see through dark and dust, to see with special sight. Who else is there? I always asked, gazing toward the stars. Is Earth the only living home? The only heartbeat ours? I long to solve this mystery since just a tiny sprite. So as I grew, I learned and planned a way to use the light that comes from stars both near and far to search for sister Earths, to find some stars with dusty disks, at least a planet's worth. For that is how a planet forms from glom together goo. Well, really, it's just dust and gas with gravity for glue. It's hard to see them in the haze of blazing stars' bright light. The dust and planets' cooler rays just disappear from sight. But then I thought of another way to find them in the glare. For light has many parts apart from those we think are there. For what we see is just a bit, a tiny bit at that of all the kinds of light that shine from light bulbs, stars, and cats. Cats, you say? How can that be? I've never seen my Fluffy shining with her own cat light. Hold on now, don't get huffy. For in a world you cannot see shines light called infrared. You feel this light upon your skin as toasty heat instead. People, possums, pets alike, all glow in infrared. And so should planets, dust and gas, with stars all interspread. I wondered if a telescope could sense this cooler light and what we'd find among the stars too cool to shine as bright. In school, I had a friend named Hugh, an engineer in training. We talked about a planet hunt and how to go campaigning. For help to build a telescope, the IR light to see, twould need to do its work from space, the heat from Earth to flee. To see such things as planets cold and gas and dust debris, the telescope itself must freeze to less than zilch degrees. To build a spacecraft telescope and chill it to the max, would take high-tech skills and lots of help. We had to learn the facts. How to make an IR sensor, keep it cold for years to come, and get it boosted into space for a sanely tidy sum. So out of college, we went to work, where experts are galore, at NASA with their spacey probes, their telescopes, and more. We found a bright and willing team of NASA brains and hands, of scientists and engineers who shared our dreams and plans. For years we sketched, we reckoned long, made lots of cool designs. We never lost our will to win, the perfect scheme to find. Our first thought was the shuttle, to take our scope aloft, a month-long mission or a few, a scientist astronaut. But far, far more our goal would serve to get our scope up higher. Above Earth's radiation belts, let's build a high free flyer. No astronaut need be aboard. We'd orbit high for years. We'd need a giant rocket boost, but no spaceman volunteers. But alas, this plan was highly priced. The spacecraft far too large. We had to think of something else with not so steep a charge. Next, we made it smaller, with its booster shrunk to scale. Instead of going round the Earth, Earth's orbit it would trail. This way, it would be cooler and easier to track. 
Its solar shields turn toward the sun, its sensor side in black. This plan was even closer to what our bosses craved. The smaller yet, they urged our plan, more mass we'd have to shave. Our telescope grew smaller still, but sharper grew our view of what we wish to do with it, what knowledge to pursue. We'll look for other planets and where they're likely found in dusty disks around new stars before the dust is bound. Brown dwarfs we'll see in infrared and super planets too. Odd orbs too dark to see in light will stand out in our view. Because as we made it smaller and as we made it cold, our partners worked on instruments and shrank them sevenfold. Two cameras and a spectrograph with special high-tech eyes to help us find the chemicals that lurk in dark disguise. A perfect IR telescope, a way to keep it cold, a plan to orbit round the sun, a rocket, sleek and bold. All pieces were in place at last, the money in the kitty. It took some years and lots of work by a passionate committee. We praised great Lyman Spitzer by picking out his name to give our precious mission the honor of his fame. Our launch was perfect. Our mood was tense. Only pictures would tell the tale. How would it work? What would we see? What mysteries be unveiled? We gasped, we screamed, we jumped for joy. As the pictures first arrived, gorgeous spiral galaxies and gas where new stars thrived. And planets, lots of evidence of planets old and new. Stars with disks of dust and gas, a plenty planet stew. The spectrometer went right to work to sniff the light for clues. It learned the planet's atmospheres. It told the planet's brews. In infrared, the planets glowed, enough to beat the shine. Of suns so bright in other hues, our telescopes they blind. The telescope outdoes my dream to see the sky at night. Now I see through dark and dust, I see with special sight. Who else is there? I always asked. Someday I'll find the key. Is Earth the only living home? I hope not, but we'll see. Lucy's Planet Hunt is a fictional account based on the Spitzer Space Telescope. Again, I'm Amy C. Oliver, Visitor and Science Center Manager at the Fred Lawrence Whipple Observatory. Thank you for joining us for today's story time. Keep reading, and as always, keep looking up.